Um, but now I'm going to introduce Sarah and Tom, who are going to talk you through one of what I think is the most important elements of the new social housing charter, and that is how to have your voice heard. So Sarah and Tom. love it when people clap yeah um, so firstly thanks for joining us today really do appreciate you giving up your time to come and join us and hear what we've got to say um, I'm Sarah Seeger and I'm director of policy here at Kilro and um, those of you that know me will know that I've recently changed my role and um, one of the reasons that happened is in no small part because of the um, Charter for Social Housing Resident and the amount of work that we need to do to make sure we're really effective in delivering that paper's aims. Do you want to introduce yourself a bit more, Tom? Hi, most of you already know me. I'm Tom, the Resident Engagement Manager here at Curo. I uh, lead the Resident Engagement team here and we look at running all of the activities within our Resident Engagement Framework, which I'll talk you through later on in this section. Okay, so you might hear me refer to the white paper as, as I do my thing, but I mean the charter if I accidentally slip up. The social housing charter and the white paper are one and the same, um, just to explain that. So, to get us started, I thought I would roll back the clock a little bit and um, just refresh everybody on why we have a white paper in the first place and why that was felt necessary. And, um, you know, over the course of time, there have been some thankfully rare but extremely concerning fires in residential blocks. Um, and the first one of those being Lackanall House back in 2009, which was a fire that happened to a social block, housing block in London. And sadly, that really proved to be a missed opportunity for government to really sharpen up some of the rules and regulations around building safety um, and construction. Um, and then roll the clock forward to the horrendous tragedy at Grenfell in 2017. And really what we've seen there, time and the inquiry following that dreadful fire has really shown um, that there were multiple reasons for that disaster. But one of them in particular is that the tenant management organisation, the group that was running um, those properties, they completely failed to listen to their residents in a really fundamental, wholesale and enduring way. And that absolutely just cannot happen again. Um, so things needed to change, absolutely. Um, and then during the period between um, the first fire back at Lackanall House and today, there's been a whole bunch of other stuff going on, which um, may have affected some landlord's ability to really be brilliant at listening and make the time to be brilliant at listening to what their residents have got to say. Um, so uh, we had a rent cut in 2015 that limited lots of providers' capacity to um, do those sorts of things, had to very much focus on supporting customers with the frontline services. And at the same time all of that was going on, we were also having the rollout of universal credit and a number of welfare reforms. And so a lot of organisations really focused on getting their residents through that transition because it was a really big deal. That was the biggest change in benefits for a legis um, benefit legislation for like more than a decade. Um, so it was a very big job and there was a lot of focus on those sorts of frontline and supports. And, you know, I think some organisations lost their way a bit with how they talk to and listen to their customers, for sure. And whilst all that was going on politically as well, the regulation that we had was very much focused on governance and financial viability and um, didn't do anything about the consumer relationship, about how we talk to our residents, about how we treat our residents, unless something had gone really quite seriously wrong. Um, and that was a real shame as well, I think. Um, and so um, where we're at now, we need more legislation to give the regulator the teeth that it needs to address some of the problems in the social housing system. And that is on its way but it will take a little while. And further legislation, conversation, consultation is going to be required um, to really get the regulator where it needs to be. So, why do we do resident engagement? Why have we, you know, what's the purpose of that in the white paper? And really, the central aim of the charter is to really reset and rebalance the relationship between landlords and their residents um, in a fundamental way. Um, it's primarily focused, as you've all heard, on good quality homes, on respect, 
on redress and also regulation and accountability. And the new world that we're moving into um, will be a lot more robust in holding landlords to account. And I think personally, um, that's a really good thing and a positive thing because it, you know, we need to level the playing field there. I think some landlords are exceptional at it and some not so much. Um, and also, you know, when, resident, uh, when resident engagement works really, really well, it does what it says on the slide. It's about mutual trust and respect and working in partnership to achieve a common goal. And that's so important. Um, and quite simply, Curo is better when we do things with you and not without you. 100%. I see that all of the time. Um, and I'm really proud of the work that Tom and his team have been doing um, for us to do more and go further with all of that. So, in terms of you sat here today, you might sometimes wonder what's in it for you if I do this. Um, please do look through the Resident Engagement Annual Report because um, it's an excellent summary of all what's been achieved in the last year. And considering the pandemic, actually, the amount that we've done is really remarkable. Um, and also, um, you know, you can have a real impact on your community. So I work with some residents in the Julian Road area and they've just done amazing things um, with their neighbourhood and their garden and their shared areas um, by working in partnership with them. Um, in this report, you'll also hear from residents themselves in terms of what they feel they've got out of the process. And a key word that keeps coming up over and over again is camaraderie. Um, so I urge you, if you're not already engaged and involved, to give it a go because a really, really warm welcome awaits. Um, so, like I said, all the achievements are listed in here. There was too many for me to start setting them out in the slide. Um, and I just wanted to stop at this point and personally thank everyone for their time and generosity and their imagination and their honesty and all of those things because I think it's been a really productive year and um, we've laid excellent foundations for the demands moving forward um, that are set out in the um, Charter. So finally, what does the White Paper say about resident engagement? Well, the government has committed to keep listening to residents. It stopped short of um, creating a body that was like a national tenant's voice, which I think is a bit of a missed opportunity. I think that would have been a great thing to do. Um, but we can certainly do that here. Um, we're going to have to show moving forward, not that just we do resident engagement, that we continually get better at it and we continually review what we've done and we continually learn and grow as an organisation that listens to its residents. Um, there's an opportunity for residents that want to do more. So the government is going to um, map out a training programme for residents. So they've got the knowledge and the skills to be able to really challenge their landlord and hold their landlord to account, which I think is amazing. And they're also going to do some work on the training that they think colleagues in our industry need as well, so that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. Um, so I'm really looking forward to all of that. Um, I think there's a huge amount to be done, but we've got a great foundation with the work that we've done so far. Absolutely, the message from our regulator is get cracking. Don't wait for us to tell you to do it. Crack on, and we absolutely are doing that. Um, and we're really, really committed to it. And on that note, I'm going to hand over to Tom, who will share with you some of the details about what it is we actually do and how it all works. So thanks very much, everyone. Yeah. Sarah, thank you for that uh, lovely introduction. I, I'm going to stay seated. I'm not going to stand up. Um, so on, on this first slide, you'll see a, a picture of what our resident involvement framework looks like. Um, we've got lots of different engagement opportunities for our customers, whether it's on a local level or on the Curo engagement side of things, which is our engagement groups. We've got in your bags, for those of you in the face-to-face -face audience today, you'll have a copy of our engagement menu. In there, you'll see all of our engagement groups listed. On our framework, you can see there's lots of different colours set out there, and it gives you the various levels and degrees of commitments that customers make as they go up through our engagement framework. The Be Informed and Feedback stages cover the lower levels 
of engagement activities that we do here when we've got to tell you something or feed back to you. That is what that bottom rung of the framework looks like. When we go to the Be Consulted section and the Participate section, you're looking at the voice box elements of our framework and some of the engagement groups. When you look at the top tiers of our framework, you're looking at the Work Together section and the Lead section. So these are our scrutiny activity groups, some of our more serious engagement groups and our oversight group. Now our oversight group, they look at performance, satisfaction, customer feedback. They make lots of decisions about which areas of the business customers should scrutinize and should take a lot of effectively what is a look under the hood, a look behind the scenes and make those uh, customer improvement suggestions. Um, we have looking out across the crowd now, I can see some of our group members in the crowd. I will come and say hello to all of you afterwards. Um, this gives you a quick show on the table here of everything that we do across the year. So running from left to right, you've got Voicebox, which is our digital engagement platform for all of our customers. We challenge teams from across the business to put regular activities on there. Customers can get involved and feedback through Voicebox. Lots of different activity types, whether it's surveys, smart boards, forums, quick polls, there's lots of different things for customers to do. We've got our focus groups and our local groups, which are our residents' associations. And we, as a team, go out and help residents' associations set up, put a constitution in place. That's right. Um, and we help them establish themselves in their communities. Um, we try and run three to four scrutiny groups every year, and those are picked on services that are selected by our oversight group. In the next column over, you've got our engagement groups, which is our oversight group. I've talked briefly about them already. Our shop group, which is our sheltered housing for older persons group. We get representatives from all of our estates that are covered by shop services to come in, listen to us, provide feedback, and then disseminate information out across our estates. Our disability action group, they help us look at all disability action um, topics across the organisation. They look at equality impact assessments with us and help us decide how our services should be run and our events. Um, we've got our complaints review form, which was briefly spoken about yesterday, where customers come in and review anonymised complaints, help our complaints team look at how we deal with complaints effectively and whether we're doing the right thing when we look at those complaints. Our Estates Partnership Board is a small group of customers from selected estates that help Carl and the Estates team here look at what services we run and how our contractors are out on the estates, looking at lots of difficult um, bits there on the estates and looking at how to tackle them. And finally, I know our leaseholder engagement group has already been mentioned, but that's the newest one on the list so far. They meet every quarter just to talk through all of the engagement groups, uh, all of the engagement issues that, that leaseholders currently face, what the services can be done going forward, and what sort of issues leaseholders face at the moment. The idea is, as Sarah touched on, is working together more closely with customers to provide better services. Um, the next row over mentions Board Connect, and you can see the residents conference there. Obviously, you're all at the residence conferences today, so thank you very much for being here. Board Connect is an opportunity for engaged customers to talk to board members directly, um, and we run those at least twice a year. And the Curo Labs on there is a session we run every March, where we get customers in to come and see the new technologies and bits that we're going to use in the following year. So look out for more details around that in March. The last column is social media takeovers. Facebook live sessions and our hot topics. I'm sure some of you out there have used Facebook and Twitter and seen all of the vid videos that teams from across the organization publish. Uh, we go out there and show you what we do, why we do it, and ask for questions. I know some of you regularly engage with our execs once a month through our Facebook live sessions. And just a quick push that there is one on Friday with Vic and Paul, if you'd like to join in with that at six o'clock on Friday. So here's a quick view of our oversight group and scrutiny. Now this sits at the top of our engagement uh, framework. Our oversight group in the middle, a group of selected customers, they review lots of performance information, data and bits of information in a pack. They pick an area for scrutiny. 
me and my team go and offer the chance to scrutinize a service to our engaged customers. Those customers spend 12 long weeks with me that they really enjoy speaking to colleagues from all across the business. They get to see really under, under the curtain, behind the scenes, however you want to phrase it, they get to see lots of different information, put together a report with some improvement suggestions. Those improvement suggestions go back to our oversight group and they write an annual report for our board. So those improvement suggestions go to our board, they get to see them, they get to see the customer um, thoughts and feelings on our services and that gets fed back into our oversight group for future conversations. The idea is our scrutiny is meaningful, it leads to improvements, we try not to duplicate things. It's resident led, so residents decide where the scrutiny activities go and what they want to look at and there is that definite connection to our board. Those of you who can see, I'm wearing a voice box t-shirt. Um, <laughs> I wear them often. <laughs> um, voice box is our engagement platform for customers. There are lots of different activities on there. There are lots of figures and bits on this slide. We've given out 20 prizes at least this year to selected customers who have won just through getting engaged. Lots of different activities. We've had over 4,000 survey responses. 450 plus quick poll responses and there's 75 forums on there where customers are regularly speaking to each other. We've doubled the number of customers on Voicebox over the last year. It's gone up from 970 to around 1770. Um, and obviously we, we ask customers how they want to receive the service. So every year we do a survey on there to say what could we make better? How could it be easier to use? 75% of people on there are satisfied with VoiceFox and 80% of them find it easy to use. We are always looking at ways to develop what we do and how we deliver it to customers. So for those 20% that don't find it easy to use, we are still working on some things for you. We will try and make it easier to use and I hope you find it easier to use over the next 12 months or so. Our engagement menu. Um, this is a paper copy for those of you in the face-to-face -face audience. And for those of you watching us digitally, you can find it on the Get Involved pages of the Curo website. We've put this together to cater for as many customers as possible. And it lists out all of our engagement opportunities. You can have a go at it, fill it in quickly. I will be around to pick up any of the leaflets that are filled in on your chairs. And I'll be around the event space later on. For the digital audience, any of those digital menus that are completed will come straight through into my inbox. But the idea is, we provide an e we provide uh, excuse me we've got a range of options for everyone every level of our framework is covered in the menu we provide lots of different ways for you as customers to influence the decisions that we make as an organization and there's an opportunity there for you to learn new skills and really challenge yourself and challenge us as an organization so please get involved we try and make it as easy as possible for as many customers to get involved with us. So what's coming next? Um, we have got plans for more community-based engagement and a part of our COVID-19 recovery is to talk to customers more about what engagement you want on a local level. We'd like to be out and about more over the next 12 months. We've done lots of community-based sessions during this week alone. and We've been out on three estates this week. We have got two more to visit out and about this week. We are up in Whiteway and then we are up in, I forgot the last one, we are up in Kingsham on the Friday. Thank you very much. Um, but we do want to hear from more customers about us getting out and about on your estates. Please don't hesitate to get in contact with us. We want to do more and we know we have to do more on the community side of things. And I would like to add, just add some final thoughts. Our resident engagement annual report, Sarah has talked about it. We have covered, thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, we have covered a lot over the last 12 months. Um, we are looking to do more and more every year. Please have a look through it for all of the good things that we've done. I can see some customers here today that have been involved heavily throughout the year. I know Sarah has already said thank you, but I'd like to pass my thanks on again. We couldn't do what we do without you. And a final push on the menu, you can see there where it's listed on the website. Please get involved. Please come along and speak to some of the Curo colleagues that get involved through our engagement groups. So I will pass over to Q&A. Now, have we got any questions from the audience? I've got some questions that have come through digitally. So 
if we haven't got any questions from the audience, whilst you, oh, I can see a question there. Is it fun? Sorry, bear, bear with me. Oh, no. Is it fun? Absolutely, 100%. It's brilliant. <laughs> it is definitely fun, Kathleen. It is definitely fun. Um, we get to see a wide variety of customers. We get to help out with lots of local issues and lots of service-based issues. And for me, the enjoyment comes with being to, able to help customers and really connect with them. So I know I'm very fortunate in my job that I get to meet a lot of customers face-to-face. -face. Um, that is the real positive for me. Yeah, I mean, I would say without exception, every group that I've personally been along to has been warm and friendly and, um, you know, there's a strong sense of community, even though you might live in different places, you're all Curo residents and that's really shone through. And I can't recall, I mean, you know, there's meetings where we've been challenged and that's absolutely right and what should happen. Um, but it's never hostile or anything like that. And certainly, if you were thinking of giving it a go, what I would say, if you want to come along and just listen to begin with, that's fine too. Um, you know, talk to us about how you might like to get started and we'll help you with that. I can see another question down the oh, yes. Um Do our Curo um, representatives regularly uh, walk around the different estates? Only I, I live, I, well, I, I, I live in Newbridge in Brassville Lane. I don't know if you would call that an estate as such, but uh, um, if I walk along the back of our lane, yep. there's some pretty unsavoury sights along there. Okay. And if that was spotted yep. by Curo staff, maybe, for example, there was a big fire uh, in, in that lane, 100 yards from our house on, on Saturday morning, uh, in a garage, that was, has been full of rubbish for well over, I think, two years. And I know that Curo have been told about it, um, even pictures sent in, but uh, the rubbish is now sort of, lot, it's a lot smaller pile now because it's, it w was set on fire. And it was actually quite dangerous because I saw the flames at some point were really, really there was a big blaze. It could have, it could have got to life-threatening proportions at some point. Okay. Um, well, I know that we have regular colleagues going out across our estates. Um, from the engagement perspective, our estates partnership board, they go out with select customers on their estates and go around and do tours on their estates. I don't know if we've got anybody from Brass Mill Lane engaging with our estates partnership board. Maybe if we could get someone from Brass Mill Lane to engage with our estates partnership board, we could connect them with their sort of a state's manager there mm. and we could encourage those more regular walk arounds we're looking to tie as many engaged customers as we can to the colleagues that service those areas so if i can catch up with you afterwards mm -hmm. and we can swap details and talk about a plan moving forward for that one is that okay. all right yeah, yeah and that's i would good. say the community-based engagement that's absolutely something that we recognize we want to do a bit more of it all got a bit tangled up with the pandemic because um, we weren't meeting face to face and so lots of the meetings that I've had with residents in their community have been over Zoom and things like that, um, which stopped it stalling completely. But yeah, we're very much looking forward to being out and doing more with residents in the actual neighbourhood. And like you say, things like joint walkabouts are a fabulous way for us to really understand what things are tricky in the neighbourhood and what things work well. Hi, it's a question for Tom. Um, over the pandemic, what would you say is the greatest challenge you've had in terms of resident engagement and what's been your greatest triumph in terms of resident engagement? <laughs> that's, that's a very good question. Um, I think the biggest challenge is being able to get customers to connect with us. So myself and my team, we've done a lot of sessions for customers, teaching them how to use Zoom and Google Meets. For, I think, a period of four weeks, I had Zoom open on my desk for any customer just to join a session. So very interesting four weeks with customers randomly appearing on my screen, talking through with them at regular intervals how to mute, unmute, turn cameras on and off, use the chat functions. There was definitely a period there for a good month where we got 50, 60, 70 customers just to learn those 
basic functions from there, they were then able to engage further in our framework. So for me, that was a real highlight in being able to take somebody who wasn't digital and be able to teach them those core skills to sort of flourish and connect with other people in their community and us as an organization. All right. Um, I can see another question here. It's a very eager hand. I want to say thank you to Tom for all that he's done over the year. But can I ask now, now we're coming out of lockdown, are we still going to be using Zoom or will we be meeting up to do this community group? That is a very good question. So very high on our agenda is hybrid meetings. We have started doing hybrid meetings. Obviously, we want things to be as safe as possible for everybody attending. So we have done a mixture, and I can see some faces in the room that have been to hybrid meetings. We are looking at doing face-to-face -face meetings with customers present with a digital effort there, so a camera that can then get those people at home that want to get involved from the comfort of their own home. We don't want people to attend if they're not ready to or they don't feel safe to. So we are working in transition from face-to-face -to, -face to digital during the pandemic to now going over to hybrid. And can I tell you what it will definitely be going forward? No, but hybrid is where we are at the moment, Wendy. So that, that, that's what we're looking at. And I don't, Sarah, okay. do you have any thoughts on, on meeting setup going forward? Um, no, I think it would probably take a bit of trial and error because certainly what we've learned as colleagues is when everyone's in the room, it's great. When everyone's on Zoom, it's great. But a mixture of the two is a little bit more tricky to make sure everyone gets an opportunity to speak up. So I think we'll have to practice a bit and see how it goes. And, you know, it remains to be seen what the winter months are like in terms of the pandemic. So we're always going to have to keep a watching eye on all the advice and regulation, whatever might you know be coming our way on that front. But um, if things don't go downhill, then we very much want to, you know, it's lovely to be in the room today with everyone and we really want to get back to that if we can. Um, certainly in the community-based events, they've suffered a bit um, for all being on Zoom. People want to walk down and meet outside the block and walk the site and things like that. And, you know, we've just not been able to do that safely for a while. Um, but we are gradually working back towards that now. Have we got any more questions? I can see two more hands. I have got some digital questions coming through as well. So I uh, thank you for all the digital questions. But yeah, so um, with all the sort of government stuff, is there a way that if there's anything going on in either local government or the main government that um, we can find out what would help Curo or help residents as well, and then sort of lobby them and help. That's no. a brilliant idea. <laughs> I love that. Um, yes. Um, so at the moment, for example, recently, um, we have been doing some lobbying around universal credit and the impending £20 a week cut. Actually, I think it's really important when we do lobbying that we don't just give facts and figures. Um, that we actually give a resident's voice in that too. And certainly in the past, when we've campaigned around universal credit, we've always made sure that residents' voices are clearly quoted so that politicians, be they local or national, really understand the impact of some of their decisions on people in the everyday world, because I think you know they are a bit detached from the realities of some of their decisions at times. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I would love to involve you guys more in the lobbying work that we do. Hi, question for Tom. Today's the first time I've ever heard that word hybrid. I, I know a little bit about computers. I'm on a computer myself, got a smartphone, but where I live, 85% of the residents don't even know what a smartphone is. And they're fed up, literally fed up, when they try to ring up for information. They have to go through all these options. And nine times out of ten, they'll put the phone down, leaving them unknowing. Last year, for instance, we were told or asked what we would like to do in our own community. And there was five residents where I lived that wanted to know about digital. Nothing's happened. So what is this hybrid? How do I get involved? 
Okay, so hybrid meetings, we have our engagement groups, our resident associations, all of the groups that, that we engage with now. A hybrid meeting would be, previously they'd be on Zoom or Gmeets, it's lots of people meeting on screens and you get used to seeing people inside a tiny little window on a screen. Like I said, Sarah said, it's very nice to see everyone here face to face. Hybrid meetings give the opportunity for us to have a, a location, so here or out in the community, um, for people to meet face to face. My team bring a digital camera with them and I would hook it up to my Chromebook, for example. That allows people who are in the comfort of their own home to connect with us digitally. So those people in that meeting can have their conversation face to face and those people from home can beam in live from their home, from where they're comfortable and still participate in the conversations that we have. Um, we want to do more and more of them. So the idea being we'll, we'll take all of our engagement groups into a hybrid setting if that's what those group members want. All right. I can see one more hand raised. Tom, we, we tried this uh, hybrid, as you put it, with yes. the shop. Yes. It just didn't work. You, you can't have so many on Zoom and so many face to face. Yeah. Um, you know, it's got to be one or the other. Yeah. Um, but a few months ago, I did suggest that Cura want to get more and more people involved. Yeah. So why don't Cura invest in 100 computers and then sell off to the, don't cost Cura anything, and sell off to the people who can't afford them, who don't know how to use them, and perhaps be interested in joining a meeting, but they haven't got their smartphone, they haven't got their pads. so. It would be a way, but I did mention this, as you know, I chair a shop meetings, and I mentioned this at the last shop meeting, and uh, it's being brought forward. So hopefully something can be done about it, because you want more people with uh, what side of it you do. Yeah. We want more people, or I do as a shop uh, chair, yeah. uh, more people involved, and to get more people involved, they got to have the equipment to do it. Yeah. it. And a lot of people haven't got that extra money to put out, but they'd be willing to buy it over a period of time. Well, like, like you said, Keith, I think at that meeting, we got that action. I think we're bringing it forward. I don't know what the update is going to be for the next meeting, but I know it. It was being looked at for a, a, a grant or something. Yeah, yeah. So. That's a, it's a really good example of you coming up with a suggestion for us, for us to go and take away and try an action. Now, I know, I know the team are looking into it, and what we can do with that grant, as you put it, we'll, we'll do what we can, and we'll feed back at the next shop meeting. I know it's a great idea. Are you and it, I, I will be there. Yeah, I, that I will be there. We'll keep you to that. Well, you, you got the Sarah with you, so you I, heard that, didn't you? I did. <laughs> October just, the 13th, I think. I, yeah, I will is. definitely be there, Keith. <laughs> um, I've got some questions that have come through from digital. But another uh, story, just one thing to add. We have got a training programme for residents that's been up and running. My colleague, Leslie, who's the yeah, director. We don't know about it now. Yeah, so we'll come and have a chat and fix that up for you. Do they know about it? And one of the things we are working on is communicating more with customers. And like, like we've said through this section, hearing your voice is the most important thing for us. We know we've got some work to do in promoting all of the bits that we do. And part of that is promoting it in the way you want us to promote it. We, we've talked to customers about what are the best avenues to talk to you through, whether it's digital, whether it's face to face, whether it's a newsletter whether it's something on a community notice board. We know we've got lots of distance to travel, but we will get there in terms of communicating with you in the way that you want. Um, I, um, we can't even get people from resident involvement to ring back when you've left a message. <laughs> Thank you for that, both of you. <laughs> And it's fine, it's fine. Um, I've got some questions here from the digital audience. It's not changing the subject as much as I'd like, Keith. But you know where I am, Keith. I will always get in contact I, I know, with you. I know, you. I know you're busy. 
<laughs> I did speak to Michelle, and she said the best thing to get an answer from Tom is to ring Michelle. Thank you. And on that note, Keith, I'll change the subject quickly and go to a question on here. I can see the questions stacking up. Um, bear with me. Wait for the questions to load. So we've got a few questions on here. How did you double the number of customers on your platform? Um, we did lots of heavy promotion about VoiceBox through social media, Facebook, Twitter. Um, our comms team have been wonderful in pushing that out and helping my team um, double that. We've done lots of competitions through the summer and over Christmas to promote what we do. And customers have taken us up on the opportunity to get involved. And I've got time, I think, for one last question. Can I pull one last question up? I seem to be having trouble with the iPad. So much for modern technology, I can hear that. Um, we've got one here about how can we, Curo make it easy for people of all generations to mix with each other, help us out and getting help out there for disabled and minority ethnic people. We have got a disability action group in place here that meet every quarter. That is a group for customers to come along and talk through all of the services that we implement through equality impact assessments and help us think about how our services really impact on customers. And touching on the diversity and inclusion aspect, we've just launched a group for colleagues that discuss diversity and inclusion here on a monthly basis. We are planning on launching a customer group from that colleague group. We are using the colleague group to plan what that diversity and inclusion group will look like. And hopefully you will hear more about that in the near future. Um, and I think that brings us to time. So I will be handing over back to Paul, but I'm back in the event space if anyone would like to come over and say hello to me or Sarah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. It's cracking to see you.